Since the topic of bear behavior is large, I'm going to start off with explaining where and why bear attacks happen. There are about four main reasons a bear will attack, and I'll cover at least one more in the next video. The main causes for attacks are the following. 1. Entering the bear's space, which includes getting too close to cubs. 2. Surprising a bear. 3. Is when bears feel that they should defend their food from you. And 4. Is when the bear is predatory and sees you as food. Personal space is extremely important to bears, and around every bear there is a large bubble of personal space that you don't want to violate. If you walk into its personal space, it may show signs that it's nervous, like looking directly at you. It may bluff charge you, or if you are way too close, it may go right to mauling you. This distance around the bear varies on the circumstances, the bear's temperament, the type of bear it is, and the density of the bears in that area. So its personal distance increases if it's eating a carcass or if it has cubs nearby. It also increases if the bear's personality is particularly intolerant of humans or other bears. Black bears are more timid and much less likely to attack you if you simply enter their personal space. Brown bears and grizzlies, on the other hand, are much more likely to attack you if you are really close. There are exceptions, of course, but this is a good rule. If you are in an area where bears and people frequently see each other, generally the bears are more tolerant of people because they become habituated to our presence. Ranger Nick Duell makes the point that in Brooks Camp, people can carry guns, and if somebody sees a bear approaching, that they might feel threatened. Most of the time, though, he says that a bear is not really threatening you by doing this. So for Brooks Park, they don't want the bears to get within 50 yards of you. If they do get that close, while it's an inherently dangerous situation, it's not a situation where the bear is always an immediate threat. You want to be cautious, but prepared to defend yourself in this situation. This is a bit of a sidetrack anyhow, so I'll get back to the main point of personal space. I want to talk about brown bears specifically for a second. For those of you who don't know, grizzlies are technically brown bears. What you need to know is that as bear density decreases, bears are more likely to attack and they will charge at you from longer distances to attack you. When food is plentiful in a specific area, that means it can support a lot of bears, and the bears are more tolerant of each other and humans in that area, because you don't need to fight and be aggressive to flourish in that area. However, if food is scarce, then bears will become more aggressive in their competition over these limited resources. So generally speaking, you want to give bears their space, because you don't want to push your luck. This is somewhat of a problem though, if people want really detailed pictures of bears. If you take pictures of bears in a zoo, you can do this easily and safely. However, some people will make a very bad decision and get close to wild bears to take pictures. Vitaly here did just that. He kept getting close to the bear until the bear had had enough of this nonsense. Vitaly had clearly used his bear spray, but it clearly had no effect on the bear because Vitaly was still mauled and consumed. Cold can and does affect the range of bear spray. However, experimentation that Dr. Tom Smith has done demonstrates that it can still work at close range even in pretty cold conditions. So we can conclude a few things. You can buy a more expensive camera with a larger lens and take good pictures from a safe distance. Also, a close range charging bear will quickly close the distance and maul you. If a bear is physically on top of you, mauling you, you can't spray through its chest and into its face. So bear spray is basically useless at this point. In comparison, if you intentionally let the bear bite your non-dominant arm or an object, you may be able to use your other hand to shoot it into the brain and instantly stop the attack. You can also shoot it into the chest as an easier but less immediately effective method. Generally when people see bears in national parks, people start gathering around the bear in crowds and taking pictures. This creates a traffic jam on roads or when in camp, a frustrating situation where rangers have to manage both visitors and bears simultaneously. When people not only get too close, but they also begin to encircle the bear as they take pictures, they needlessly create a dangerous situation. Now, Vitaly had not surprised the bear, 
Surprising a bear and violating its personal space are two separate rules. The more rules you break through your actions, the more likely you'll be hurt or killed. Surprising a bear causes a reflexive response, which just means that it's a natural reaction. It's an instinctual response designed for reacting to a worst case scenario, a surprise attack from another bear. While it's just natural bear behavior, you also have to understand that it does want to kill you. That's why the advice for a defensive brown bear attack is to always play dead if the bear starts tearing into you, because looking dead and unmoving is the response the bear wants to see. If you keep moving and trying to get up, and the bear sees that, it'll keep coming back and tearing you apart until you really are dead. Some people have survived by sticking their hand down the bear's throat and trying to gag it. It may have worked for some people, but in general I'd say it's a really foolish idea because there's literally nothing from stopping the bear from tearing your arm apart before your hand reaches the back of its throat. It'd be a much better idea to try to stick a rifle barrel down its throat. If your gun gets a little chewed up, it's no big deal. You can buy a new gun. You can't buy new fingers or unmutilate your arm. And as this quote demonstrates, you may fire a revolver down a lion's throat, but that doesn't end the threat. If this guy was by himself, he'd be out of luck because he took away his only means of defending himself when he let the lion bite down on his arm and make it useless. It was a brain shot that actually killed the lion and stopped the attack in this case. You may be thinking that's a double standard though, because I already said you could let the bear bite your arm while you shoot it in the chest or head. A few seconds of letting it maul your arm while you inflict lethal damage on it is a whole lot different than sticking your entire arm down its throat and hoping for the best. Back to the point though. There is overlap between surprising bears and violating their personal space, because if you wander through thick brush and a bear suddenly sees you at close range, you've broken both rules. So you really want to be making lots of noise beforehand so bears know that you're coming and won't be surprised. If you blow an air horn every few minutes, you can prevent the vast majority of defensive bear attacks. I also want to emphasize the point that if you see the bear before it sees you, do not feel the need to shout or blow an air horn at close range. This will surprise the bear and probably cause a charge in mauling. You want to be making loud noise before you walk into the thick brush. If you are walking through an open area and you have good visibility, then you don't really need to blow an air horn all the time. However, you should still be making some kind of noise even if it's just talking or playing a podcast over a Bluetooth speaker. You also want to be really paying attention to your surroundings because bears will sleep during the day and if bears are all slumped over and sleeping in a shaded area, it can be kind of difficult to see them. Ranger Nick Duell walked within two yards of a sleeping grizzly and startled it. This particular bear was generally relaxed around people, which was extremely lucky for him. If this had happened in an area that had sparser bear population, and with a bear that was less tolerant of people, with all honesty, he probably would have gotten really badly mauled. This is the sort of incident that really starkly demonstrates how different environments and the individual personalities of bears leads them to be more or less forgiving of the mistakes humans make. Probably the place that you are most likely to accidentally cause a defensive attack is the salmon stream surrounded by thick brush. Salmon means bears will be there frequently, loud running water means that they won't hear you, and thick brush means that they won't see you until you're really close. The chances of a surprise encounter increase even more if the wind prevents the bear from smelling you ahead of time, and a blind turn in the trail decreases the sight distance even further. So while air horns are quite effective, other methods are not as good at getting a bear's attention. Whistles are okay, and they're better than the human voice, but bear bells are just useless. I'd say bear bells are worse than useless, actually, because hikers who wore them saw bears at closer distances than hikers who didn't. The obvious reason for this is that hikers were given false confidence and were not making noise that would actually scare away the bears. So bells are only really good at annoying other hikers. 
Food-related attacks, or ones made in defense of food, are a lot more rare than they used to be because people have generally stopped feeding bears. One of the most dangerous things someone can do in bear country is kill something like an elk. Leave the carcass overnight and come back early next morning by yourself while it's still dark out. Because a bear has had all night to find that meat, and as far as he's concerned, it's his now. If you are stumbling around in the dark by yourself trying to take an elk that a bear has claimed, you have made a grave mistake. You should only come back during the daytime and only when you are well armed. You should bring as many friends with you in this situation and make sure that they aren't helpless either. If they have no idea how to use a gun, just buy them bear spray and show them how to use it. Not only do they increase your chance for survival, but they can also help carry out the meat. Also, as far as hunting goes, you want to take the guts out and move the meat as far away from the guts as possible. Bears like to eat the guts first, especially if the animal is an herbivore. If you're bow hunting or if you have a muzzle loader, you better make sure that you're paying attention to your surroundings because you've only got one shot. You also want to have a handgun or at least bear spray just in case. More generally speaking, if you're walking down a trail and you smell something really bad, like something is dead, you want to get out of that area. Bears are not happy if you get between them and the carcass that they've claimed. Bears will also try to cover up carcasses with dirt and debris or try to bury it in order to prevent other predators from finding it. So you may not immediately see a carcass, but chances are you'll probably smell it, especially if it's hot out. Rangers and other folks will stress how important it is that bears don't associate people with a food reward, but they don't always explain why. Bears are really smart, and once they figure out what pushovers we humans are, and that we frequently carry food in our backpacks, they'll just keep knocking us down and taking our backpacks. That is, until they find someone who isn't a pushover who will shoot the bear. In my opinion, anyone who keeps food in their tent has a death wish, and anyone who puts an electric fence around their camp is pretty safe. However, a common problem that people have is that there won't be any trees around that you can hang your food from out of reach from the bears. I think I have a potential answer to this problem. What you want to do is take a long length of insulated wire, tie into the fence around your camp, and run the wire on the ground to another location where you can make a small electric fence around just your food. People always say that your food should be at least 100 yards away from your camp. This is, in all likelihood, an arbitrary distance, because the bear is not stupid. If it sees a tent and smells food in the area, it's probably going to investigate both. If you're doing a good job anyway, in sealing up your food so that there is minimal smell, a large, brightly colored tent will be more interesting anyway to a curious bear than faint food smells. For example, electric yellow tents and bright clothing have proven to attract bears' interest more than neutral colors and camouflage tents. Likewise, bright blue PVC pipes have proven to be more interesting to bears than smelly fish. People shouldn't underestimate their intelligence or penchant for mischief, and particularly the sub-adults will get into a lot of trouble just because of how curious they are. Since I'm talking about protecting your camp, you also want to get one of those motion-activated critter-getter devices that lights up and makes noise and scares away the bear. Finally, we have predatory behavior. There is a tendency for some people to sort of dismiss predatory attacks as something that you don't really need to prepare for because they are rare. That's clearly flawed thinking in my opinion because your actions can determine whether bad outcomes happen to you personally. Timothy Treadwell, for example, kept making poor decisions, which would eventually lead him and his girlfriend to getting killed and eaten by bears. He deluded himself into thinking his actions had no consequences and paid dearly for it. As long as there are bears, there are going to be predatory attacks, because they're just predators. A bear mauling survivor named Elena Hansen contacted Tom Smith because she was upset that through her whole life, the message she had gotten was that bears want nothing to do with you. That advice was terrible in her situation because it was a predatory black bear that had attacked her. Tom explains that if that's the message you give people, 
they sort of dismiss predatory attacks and think about other things. So Tom Smith's bottom line is that some bears will automatically see you as prey. And without some kind of way to defend yourself, that bear is just going to win the fight and eat you. You may have noticed before that I consider bears who chase trail runners and mountain bikers as exhibiting predatory behavior. Just like with dogs, a fleeing creature automatically triggers a predatory instinct. Grizzlies, for example, like to run down elk calves and eat them, which is great for a hungry bear, but bad for elk conservation because bears can eat a whole lot of elk. It's no great secret that running or biking in bear country can be dangerous and pretty foolish. You are in a constant state of doing the one action you should never do in a bear encounter, fleeing. However, a bear may not always try to eat you if it catches up to you. This is not at all comforting though when you see that a bear is chasing you. No matter how much you would want to keep running or biking, you have to realize that you are not going to win that race. So the sooner you stop and get out a gun or bear spray, the better your chances look. I've heard some people say that you should put bear spray into the water bottle holder on your bike, and this is a really bad idea because if you swerve into something because you've just surprised a bear, and that bear spray will get knocked out. So you really want to keep it on your person somewhere easily accessible. Also, children and shorter people are more likely to be seen as prey because they are small. This is at least true for polar bears, which are true carnivores. It doesn't help that children like to run around either, so if you bring your kids into bear country, give them at least a basic understanding of safety and don't let them out of your sight. This should apply in general, not just for bears. Finally, I have a lot more to say on this topic, so there is going to be at least one more video on bear behavior coming soon. Some of the most commonly given advice about what to do in a bear encounter is quite wrong and dangerously counterproductive.